is absolutely no reason why I can't give everybody top of line best medical care. But that got kind of difficult when things started to deteriorate, deteriorate around here during Katrina and that whole facade, that whole veneer that you could take care of poor people and you could take care of them as well as you could take care of rich people, that all just fell, those walls came down. And I mean, one of my patients said to me, he had lost, he had already heard through family members that he had lost his grandmother and his aunt from the Ninth Ward family gotten out. But he'd heard through family members that he'd lost his grandmother and his aunt. And I mean, the water came up in their house 10 feet an hour. And he was just really grieving. Pretty young guy, like in his 40s. He had a spinal cord injury. So he's pretty immobile, like most of my patients, very immobile. And I just went in, you know, and he was just laying there. And by now, it's like 106 degrees. There are no lights. We are reduced to feeding people very small portions. And I tried to keep a stiff upper lip in the beginning, you know, cheery out, look with my patients. Hey, we're going to get out of here. Don't worry about it, blah, blah, blah. But I think we're all just so exhausted. And I remember sitting by his bedside, and he said to me, he said, Dr. K, have the patients in the private hospitals gotten out? I said, you know what? They have. He said, do you think we're going to get out today? No, this is already going on five days. I said, well, I look outside. I see the sun is setting. Now, they made a lot of promises about coming, but I see the sun is setting. And I don't know. We may be here another night. I said, I think, I think we better be prepared for that. I said, I don't know. We may be here more than one night. And he said, well, do you think they're eventually going to come and get us? And I said, I don't know. I said, I really don't know. And that made me feel so crappy and like ashamed a little bit, like ashamed not to be able to do for people what I wanted to do, which was to get them the hell out of here in a safe, to a safe place. I mean, you know, my patients at charity, they're not dumb. The, the nurses at charity, they're not dumb. They knew we were going to be the last ones out. They knew that the patients in the private hospitals had private helicopters. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a shock to anybody. But the fact that it wasn't a shock to people was so shocking to me. And you just see the desperation of being poor in this country and in some ways the distrust. I mean, the deep down that this is not the first time that this has happened to people. I'm privileged. This is the first time I have ever been totally abandoned by my government. But it's not the first time for my patients or the nurses or the other people who work at Charity Hospital. And I have a lot of history with the nurses on the floor. A lot of them know me since I'm a medical student. And 100% of the nurses on the floor are African American. And the African American nurses and the other people who work at charity said two things to me early on. They said, one, they opened the levees on us, meaning they had flooded the poor areas of Orleans Parish to spare the other parts. And two, they said to me early on, they're not going to come and get us. I mean, here I am coming from my privileged position. What do you mean they're not going to come and get us? Of course they're going to come and get us. FEMA knew we were here. We were in constant contact with FEMA. But my patients really did sense. And that part made me ashamed. And I thought, you know what? It must be like this your whole life. Just that feeling that we have to do for ourselves because nobody's going to come and get us. Just that feeling of being abandoned. That was all new for me. Being abandoned, oh, that was all new for me. But for my patients and the people who worked at charity, it was just one more thing. And they just went about their business. Every nurse on that floor worked for six days in that heat with no power, with flashlights. They never missed a vital sign. They never missed a urine output. They never missed a trick. And with a heavy sense of resignation. And, and so that hole that I had always tried, you know, hey, you're here at charity, but don't, don't worry about it. You're going to get the best possible care. You know what? 
We are going to give you the best possible care, but we can't make the government or FEMA come and get us. Kirsten Kurtzberg.